What's up everybody, it's AJ here with Snowtrax TV and I am doing another weigh-in. If you remember last year, we did a YouTube only uh, end of season weigh-in just to see what everything weighed because we weren't able to do it at the start of the season. This year we are doing one at the start of the season and you're gonna get to see what all the 2024s that we have on the ground are. This includes the Catalyst 600. This includes the new uh, MXZ competition package with the turbo. It also includes the Polaris VR1 with the turbo as well as about a dozen other sleds. So stay tuned. There's also going to be one real interesting one at the very end that we're going to, uh, going to show you. I think you're, I think you're going to want to see that, but, uh, let's get on to wait. No, you know what? We're going to make you wait till the end to see the turbos. Let's see what these things weigh. Cause I'm really interested now. Yes, of course we did put full oil, full fuel, and they are full of coolant. So uh, it, it's pretty much as close as we could get to actual real world riding sled weights. Um, no, they don't have spare belts in them. Yes, they do have their tool kits. If we're getting down to those kind of weights being a big difference, then uh, we're probably being a little too specific. So let's get into it, see what this thing weighs. I'm really interested. I'm not so interested as to just what this weighs. I'm interested as to what it weighs in comparison to its competition because dang, this thing feels light. Um, yes, this is a first edition, so it was a late production last year that they sent to us, but it is exactly the same as the new ones from this year. So let's get into it and uh, start weighing. <coughs> Make sure we're off the ground. I'll take this chain off. We are dangling. That is 561 pounds actual riding weight, real world weight, let's call it that. So next up on the, uh, on the scales is the 24 MXZ XRS 129 600R. This does not have the 10.25 inch screen and it does not have smart shocks. So I would say that this is a pretty close comparison to the ZR Catalyst uh, in almost every way, shape and form. Um, not extra technology in any way. So this, this is gonna be interesting. Let me zero the scale and see where we get to. I'm excited about this one. There she be, we are dangling. I am blown away. This thing is 574.5 pounds. Now, I, that's shocking because I thought that the Catalyst was going to be way lighter. I mean, that's less than 15 pounds. That's that's surprising. I know 15 pounds is a lot in the two-stroke market, but um, I thought that this Skidoo was a bit heavier than it actually is, especially with all the plastic work on it, extra body panels and whatnot. Skidoo's doing some good stuff. That's, that's impressive that they're this light against the Catalyst. So let's pull in the... Uh, 650 Indy. Let's see what it comes in at. I'm interested. This is, this is, this is good. So this is the 2024 Polaris XCR 650 128 with the S7 display in it. So the GPS, this one does have more technology than the other two 600s that we just weighed in. So there's something to be said about that. I bet that gauge weighs a few extra pounds. So um, obviously full of gas, full of oil, like we said before. Let's see what this one weighs in at. I'm really interested to see because um, this is kind of the trifecta now. We're gonna, we're gonna see where everybody stacks up against one another. Let's get the weigh in. We'll zero this thing out. Here we go. So 588.5 pounds does mean that the Polaris is a little bit heavier than everybody else. Now it does have more technology than everybody else as well, but I don't think the technology weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 pounds or just under 10 pounds. So um, yeah, it's definitive. Polaris is the heaviest, Skidoo is the second, and Articat is the lightest. So this is a 2024, a Skidoo Renegade XRS 900 Ace Turbo R, and it is the 137 because it's a Renegade, obviously. It has smart shocks, it has the 10.25 display. Uh, 
I think that this snowmobile is as loaded as you can get when it comes to a Renegade. This is all of it. So um, I'll be interested because the XRS MXZ was 574-ish, 574.5 in a 600. So yeah, you're going to a 137, you're going Renegade, but I mean, these two sleds almost look like siblings beside each other. Same paint scheme, same, you know, that way. Minus the 10.25 and the Smart Shocks. But let's, let's see what a, what a real four stroke and a little bit of track length actually costs you. And this sled does have an Ice Ripper uh, 130, 137 as well. So yeah, kind of interesting. Some of, these, some of these numbers, you know, you just never know. You read the brochures, but I mean, that's without fuel, oil, coolant. Well, I guess no oil, and well, yeah, engine oil in these ones, just not two-stroke oil. Let's see what it comes in at. I zeroed it out. 635 pounds. 635 pounds, that means you're only paying a 50, 50 pound weight penalty. Just over, like 55, yeah. Um, 55 pounds, but you have to remember, if you took smart shocks off this and you took the 10.25 screen, and you took that 137 track and turned it into a 120, 129. I don't know, I think that 50 pounds would probably drop down to about maybe 25. That, that means that Skidoo's building some dang light two stro or four strokes. <clears throat> That's shocking. Okay, so this here is a 24 Polaris Indy XC 129 with the S4 Pro Star mill in it. It does not have the 7S display. Uh, it's just got the old school PID display in it. Um, and it has a Cobra on the back, not an ice Cobra. So it's not pre-studded. Um, yeah, let's see what this uh, weighs in comparison to the Skidoo. Well, and even the, even the 650. I'll be interested to see. I did zero it out. 670 pounds, 670 pounds, man. All right, Skidoo is, Skidoo's doing something a lot different, man. 670 pounds, that I, I'm shocked. I thought it was gonna be a whole lot lighter than that. I mean, not to say that it needs to be, it rides great and it's an awesome front end. Um, I just thought it was, I thought it was gonna be closer. This sled right here is a, oh, a little bit extra weight there. This is a 2024 Polaris Adventure 137 with the 650 engine in it. Uh, it does have the 7S display. Uh, it's got the piggyback shocks. And yes, it does have like the rear little uh, storage bag that comes with it because that's as it's shipped. And it has the two up seat. Um, I'm not really sure what we're gonna compare this to. It's just interesting to know what it weighs. So let's zero it out and put it in the air. So this tips the scales at 620.5 pounds. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> it's an adventure. Who cares what it weighs? It's a great sled. It's a comfortable sled. This is a 2024 Polaris Titan with the S4 motor in it. This is the Adventure Titan. Um, it is just a big snowmobile. I mean, it's got a box on the back that, um, you know, you could smuggle things across the border in. Uh, it has a two-up seat that is almost as comfortable as a high-end European car. Uh, it has running boards on it that are off of a mountain sled. I don't know what the weight's gonna prove. It doesn't really matter because the Titan Adventure is an awesome snowmobile. I mean, if you wanna go on a long mile tour trip, there's almost nothing out there better than this. It's, it's just a great, comfortable, really reliable solid sled and it's still even got piggybacks on it like Polaris always does that they put cool shocks on everything so let's zero this sucker out oh it is we're good let's uh <coughs> let's see what it is I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna put bets on it being north of 800 pounds I'll, I'll bet it's over 800 pounds 835.5 so <coughs> the Titan weighs in at 835.5 pounds I don't know what to compare that to. I mean, the thing's even got mechanical reverse on it. It's got, it's got a lot of things and it's not meant to be light. So 
I don't really think it matters, but it's just interesting to see how much it weighs. So, 835.5. This here, 2024 Polaris VR1. Uh, this is the 137, it's the 850, it's not the turbo. And it does have the seven inch display because it's a VR1, so you pretty much only get it one way. Um, yeah, let's lift this thing up and see what it weighs. It's, uh, this is a great snowmobile. Zero that one out. I think we are dangling. So the VR1850 non-turbo weighs in at 581 pounds. Um, yeah, I don't have another 850 right now to compare it against. So uh, that's the numbers. Up next is the 24 Backcountry XRS. This is the one that's now in the G5 chassis. This is the 146. And we did opt for the, I believe it's a 175 Ice Cobra. Uh, I think that's a new track too. Yes, it does have the 10.25 inch display. No, it does not have smart shocks because it is a backcountry. Um, but all I can tell you about that, let's lift it up and see what it weighs. And we're dangling. Let's get these chains off there. So the Backcountry XRS 146 comes in at 577.5, which actually is pretty impressive considering the fact that this is a 146 and it has an Ice Cobra, uh, the larger 1.75 Ice Cobra. That's pretty cool. And it's got a 10.25 inch display. Um, so far today, this is the lightest 850. So right now we're looking at the 24 Polaris Assault. This is the 146. We did put a 1352 Cobra on it this year. Um, this is the boost. So uh, it's got the turbo on it and it does have a seven inch or 7S display. So um, about as, no, it is as well equipped of an Assault as you can get. So uh, besides going with a larger track, but that was an option that we put on it. So let's see where this thing weighs in at. Um, we just weighed little bit ago of VR1. Obviously not the same, a little bit different track length, but it'll give us a bit of an idea maybe of what the uh, what the boost weighs in extra. I know Polaris has told us, but we don't believe everything. So the Assault weighs in at 604 pounds. I mean, if you want to compare this to the VR1, which really is no comparison because it's a longer track, it's got the turbo, all of those things. It's just over 20 pounds heavier. Really not that bad considering that we went to such a larger track over the VR1. So pretty interesting, um, 604 pounds, that's what it is. So something interesting to note is if you wanna take a Backcountry XRS that we just weighed, that mint colored one in orange, um, it's a 146, it's an 850, it's not a turbo, but it does have an ice ripper on it. This is an Assault, so you're talking uh, similar sled, you know, comparable obviously, 146 as well. Uh, but it does have the boost in it. This does have the big screen, so did our, uh, so did our backcountry. You're looking at about a 30 pound penalty to go to this uh, assault with the boost on it over that one. Now, you're talking a completely different category of engine as well. So I'll be interested to see what a backcountry XRS with a turbo in it weighs in at, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that one, won't we? All right, you've been good sports. You waited till this point or you just scanned through to the end, but either way, you're here. Let's get the weights of the turbos and see exactly how they stack up against each other. Now, these are the direct competition because they are the only turbo trail sleds that you can buy. Um, so yeah, there's no extra options. There's no extra features. There's no extra boxes to tick. Make sure you do stick around after these two though, because I got one more sled that I think you're gonna be pretty interested in. Um, something a little bit unique. Let's get this thing weighed in. Make sure I zero it out. This is for all the marbles. <laughs> so 
So the MXZ XRS with the Turbo R850 is 614 pounds. I don't know what to tell you because I haven't yet weighed the Polaris, but I'm gonna be real, real interested because the rest of today did not necessarily go the way that in my mind I thought that it would. Um, this is, this is gonna be interesting. Let's, let's get the Polaris up here. Remember, this is obviously the way that it comes. You can't get anything else. 10.25, it's got the uh, you know uh, bigger body shocks on this one. It has the turbo. Um, it has obviously the uh, methanol tank on the back. Um, so it, it's, it's just the way that it is. Oh, and it doesn't have a studded track because the competition package doesn't come with one. Um, this track is built for higher speed and you gotta stud the thing if you want studs in it. So. Uh, no ice ripper on this one, but the Polaris, Polaris might have an ice ripper. Let's find out. So this is the 24 Patriot Boost VR1 137 with the 7S display. Like all other VR1s, it comes as it comes. You can't change it too much. Um, it doesn't have a presetted track. I thought that it did, but it doesn't. So. Um, yeah, let's see exactly how much it weighs in at in comparison to Skidoo's. I believe it was 614 pounds as the last one. This is the turbo to turbo, head to head, weight shootout. I'm interested. Let's zero this thing out. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. <sighs> I think the players is going to be a bit heavier. The VR1 turbo comes in at 602 pounds. That's interesting. Okay, so here's the... Here's the outcome. This Polaris is 12 pounds lighter than the direct competitor MXZ XRS competition package with the 850 turbo. And maybe that's because it's got the methanol tank on the back that you gotta fill up. Maybe that thing's, I'd be interested to pull that off, we're not going to, uh, to see exactly how much it weighs. But even if you do have to take that off, you still don't get the performance if you take it off. So at the end of the day, the Polaris is 12 pounds lighter and you can't argue that, that's just that's just fact. And this thing is topped up with fuel and oil. Don't worry, we've done that as well as coolant. So, an interesting day. Polaris was overall heavier in most other categories. And then when it comes down to the one that I was really particularly interested in, they dropped 12 pounds in, in comparison to the competition. So, uh, really, really interesting. But don't go yet. We got, we got two more things that we're gonna weigh for you. Um, both very unique, very unique. So this beautiful, beautiful snowmobile right here, I mean, this, uh, this absolute just weapon of a, of a snowmobile is a 2000, it is actually the year 2000, Skidoo Touring E 380 fan. It has electric start, it has a two-up seat, it has steel skis, and no, it does not have a touch screen. It barely has electronics. It has 2,700 kilometers on it, which is under 2,000 miles. Uh, it has a full tank of oil. Does it have a full tank of gas? I'm not sure. The gas gauge on it is broken because it's mechanical and it's completely hazed over. In fact, it doesn't even have the little floater on it because it's broken. So we're just going to weigh this for the interest of it. As much as I'm joking right now, I'm actually kind of interested to see what an old school sled does weigh um, because I think that's something that we forgot from years past. Nobody really thinks about it anymore. I mean, what is fiberglass hoods and big old belly pans and steel skis? I mean, <clears throat> It'll be interesting. I, I don't know. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a number out there. I think this thing probably. Yeah, it's not a huge horsepower sled. It's it's not like a an 800. It's not a 600. It's not a 500. It's not a 400. It's a 380. Uh, you know, and it's a leaf blower. But I think I think it's probably gonna be. I don't know. Maybe in the mid fours. Let, let's find out. It's it's not that heavy. I can lift the thing up and move it around pretty easy. I, I think it's gonna be high fours. Let's see. Maybe it'll shock us. I don't even know where to lift. Oh, it's coming up. We're dangling. I'd say that's 531.5 pounds. It's got steel skis. When I change these to plastic Kimpex skis, probably lose 100 pounds. Put a new, put a new snow flap on it because this one got chewed. It is pre-studded track too. By pre-studded, I mean studded by the guy who owned it before me. Um, 
Oh, it's got a spare belt in it too. So with all those things considered, I'd say it probably weighs somewhere in around the 360 range. Drop about 200 pounds, 180 pounds there. No problem. It's a weapon. This is a Widescape WS250. Of course we gotta weigh it. I'm stoked to ride it this winter. I don't even know where to lift from. Um, I guess we just, I guess we, I guess we go different. I mean, it's a widescape. It is different. Let's lift it differently. If I can get this. Okay. Time to weigh the widescape. Um, I don't know. 200 pounds, maybe. Maybe it's less than 200 pounds. I know they've already told us, um, but I can't remember exactly. I think it's gonna be super light. Put your guess up on screen. If you get it right, you win the internet today. Two hundred and thirty point five pounds. So this is less than half the weight of like a race snowmobile, essentially. Less than half the weight of like a full-blown Polaris RMK super light sled. It is super, super light. 230 pounds roughly. That's cool. Anyways, thought you guys might find interest in this. Um, yeah. You could have two widescapes for the weight of a 2000 Touring E 380 fan. Think about that for a minute. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. We're gonna to try to weigh stuff every year, give you the actual fact. I'm not saying that manufacturers don't tell uh, the right weights, but they only tell us the dry weights. And the important stuff is weighing a vehicle as you ride it, because that's really what you're gonna feel when you're going down the trail. Sure, you might burn through a tank of fuel and it's gonna change a bit, but nobody goes out and, and rides a sled from a quarter tank of gas all day long. So we gotta weigh these things full of oil, full of fuel, full of coolant, and full of battery acid. That's just the way that we gotta do it. And I hope this was interesting. Um, you know, if you want us to do this differently, if you think there's a better idea, if you'd like to see something a little bit different, just let us know down in the comments section. We read this stuff and uh, we'll try to put it into action, but this is something we wanna start doing every year again. Super Tracks used to do it. Um, CJ Ramstead was always a proponent of doing this and he pushed us to do it every single year. So I think it's uh, something that we're gonna bring back in, uh, in his memory and continue to do because real world sled weights, well, they're important.